We begin with Decision 2016. This is a live look at UNLV Stadium where Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Hillary Clinton will face off tonight. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Lowry. This is the third and final debate. Then there's just a little more than two weeks to election night. NBC's Steve Handelsman is in Vegas and joins us with what you can expect during the debate. Thanks. Good evening. Use press contingent here for the final presidential debate at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where Donald Trump clearly has the trickier task. He's got to, if he can win in November, he's got to reduce Hillary Clinton's appeal in swing states like this one, Nevada. His advisors urge him to, in their words, focus. They want him to press Hillary Clinton on how she left the White House poor and now is a quarter billionaire. They want him not to talk about the election being rigged, but it's Donald Trump. Secondly, Hillary Clinton. She's just got to hold her own. She's got a big lead in the polls. She will have to deal with questions, of course, about her emails. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Las Vegas. Here in Wisconsin, voters are ready to throw support behind their candidate tonight. NBC 26's Billy Wagness kicks off our live team coverage in Green Bay at the Democrats watch party. Hi, Billy. Hi, Megan. Here at the Democratic Party of Brown County headquarters, volunteers and voters alike say they're well aware of what's at stake here in Wisconsin this election. Now, party leaders here say tonight's debate is about far more than just the race to the White House. If the millennial vote, for example, turns out to the polls in large numbers for Clinton, it could be a good sign for local Democrats, which is why her supporters say she needs to stay calm tonight and focus on policies that connect with voters. With each one, there seems to be a little bit more enthusiasm, especially with younger voters. And I think younger women in particular have started thinking about the fact that they themselves are entering a workforce now. Now, the latest survey from the St. Norbert College Strategic Research Institute shows Clinton ahead of Trump here in Wisconsin, 47 percent to 39 percent. But with this renewed concern over these hacked emails from the Clinton campaign, the results of tonight's debate are really anyone's guess at this point. Reporting live in Green Bay, keeping you connected, Billy Wagness, NBC 26. Thank you, Billy. Tonight is the last chance for Donald Trump to show voters he has the temperament to be president on a national stage. Brown County Republicans gathering tonight to watch the debate in Alloway. NBC 26's Marissa DeCandido is there and continues our live team coverage. Marissa? Well, Megan, Republicans here tell me that Donald Trump has to focus on the issues tonight if he wants to win this debate. They also say he has to make a statement about why he's a better candidate than Hillary Clinton. Republicans are gathering here at the Brown County Party headquarters in Alloway. They say they think this final debate matters to voters because many are still undecided. Brown County Republican Party Chair Marion Krumberger says despite trailing Clinton in the polls, she thinks Donald Trump still has a chance to win the Badger State. Uh, traditionally in Wisconsin, as the election gets closer, the uh, polls always tighten. Uh, it, it, he, he does have a very good chance of winning Wisconsin. This is not, uh, it, it is not a done deal for, uh, for Clinton. Well, Krumberger says she thinks undecided voters are looking for a change, and that change will only come with Donald Trump. I'll be live tweeting throughout the event tonight, so follow along with us on Twitter at NBC26. I'll have Republican reaction for you there. And tonight at 10, we will talk with Republicans about what they think of the debate and Trump's performance. Live in Alloway, keeping you connected, Marissa DeCandido, NBC26. And be sure to watch the debate live on NBC 26 tonight starting at 8. We'll also be live streaming the debate on our website, NBC26.com. And check back for post-debate analysis tonight on NBC 26 live at 10. Cameron Moreland is on the road again tonight. He's at Lambeau Field ahead of tomorrow's Bears versus Packers game. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Megan. Yeah, we're back at Lambeau Field in anticipation for the big game tomorrow night. It is absolutely beautiful right now, but by kickoff tomorrow, evening temperatures will be running about 20 to 25 degrees colder. So what are we seeing? Let's take a look at the current conditions across the Badger State. You can see it's 65 degrees right now in Green Bay. It's 59 in Wausau, but 
It's 45 in Superior. We've got much colder weather pushing in from the north and west. Your 12-hour planner for tonight calls for a mixture of high clouds and some stars. Temperatures will be around 60 by 6 o'clock and then steadily falling through the 50s and then into the 40s as we head into early tomorrow morning. Megan? Now to new information, the U.S. is accusing ISIS of holding the people of Mosul as human shields as the operation to retake the northern Iraqi city from the terrorist group continues. Iraqi forces are closing in on Mosul, pushing toward the city today from three sides. The U.N. expects more than 200,000 people to be displaced. Fox Valley officers arrested 16 people during a sex trafficking sting in Appleton. Twelve men and four women were taken into custody during the operation Cross Country X. That same nationwide effort also resulted in 15 arrests in Brown County. Police say the men range in age from 19 to 54. The women are in their early 20s. A Green Bay man is accused of forcing himself on former co-workers and is now facing charges of having sex with a child. According to court documents, he worked as a chef at the 1001 Club where some of the incidents occurred. He's being held in a $20,000 cash bond and is expected to be back in court November 7th. Harley Davidson plans to lay off about 225 salaried employees by the end of the year. The motorcycle maker says sales have been slow this year and it has to cut costs. A new way to call an emergency into police is headed to Brown County. In early 2017, the Public Safety Call Center will start responding to text messages. It will enable the hearing impaired and those who, can, who need to be discreet get the help they need. NBC 26's Eric Kress has the details. Eric? Text messaging 911 will not work today in Brown County, and even after the new system is implemented in 2017, law enforcement hopes you'll call if you can. And this is why the new texting system will not be able to peg down your specific location in an emergency. You'll have to relay to dispatch where you're located, but for someone who chooses to text 911 because it's too dangerous to talk on the phone like a hostage situation or an active shooter or even the hearing impaired for that matter, texting 911 could be a game changer in contacting the police. You know, we, how do we answer? How do we tell them that we need help? How do we provide our address? You know, that is stressful to think about prior to needing to use that 911 call center. It's going to reach a segment of, a segment of society that can't do that right now. And it's also um, going to be for those emergency situations where people can't call us. When the system is up and running, a dispatcher will communicate with you in real time. It's important you tell them where you are, what the emergency is, and who you are as well. Now, Manitowoc is the only other county in northeast Wisconsin with such a system in place. Very interesting information. Thanks, Eric. Well, the Packers are teaming up to help domestic violence victims, how you can help them out. Plus, who doesn't love getting flowers will tell you about a fresh new initiative hoping to brighten your day. You're connected to NBC 26 News at 5 with Megan Lowry, Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland, and Sports Director Charlie Sakaitis. NBC 26 News at 5, keeping you connected.